Hello, it's me, Mr. Mustafa. Welcome to my geography class. Today, we can discuss the topic of precipitation. That means, what is precipitation? What are the different forms of precipitation? How do they occur? From the chapter, Sun, the Ultimate Source, 9th Standard Geography, Kerala Syllabus. So, last class, we had seen the formation of clouds. Clouds are nothing but a condensed water droplets. As uh, condensation continues, the size of the water droplets in the cloud grow in size. And the earth, here it is what the surface of the earth, earth exerts its gravitational force. So not able to resist the gravitational force exerted by the earth, here the water droplets, the water droplets from the cloud get released separated because its size increases because of what uh, continuous condensation and earth is exerting gravitational force so not able to unable to resist the gravitational force the large sized water droplets released from the cloud and fall on earth surface and this process is called uh, precipitation precipitation in natural, it is the amount of rain or snow falling from the sky to the earth. So, precipitation occurs in different forms or types. What are the different types of precipitation? They are given on a chart. You look at the chart. There are different forms of or types of precipitations. They are rainfall, snowfall and hailstones. So these are the different types of precipitations, snowfalls, hailstones, rainfalls and we can discuss one by one. Let us see the first snowfall. When temperature falls below 0 degrees Celsius, precipitation reaches on earth's surface in the form of tiny very small or tiny crystals of ice or what a flakes of ice or sleet of ice and this is called a snowfall look at the tree leaves and the terrain they are covered by tiny crystals of ice and they are the result of snowfall this is snow falling tiny crystals of ice flakes of ice are falling down from the sky so hailstones here it is what that cloud Cloud is nothing but a full of water droplets. If the water droplets released from the cloud happens to pass through colder layer in the atmosphere. Here it is the colder layer in the atmosphere. So the water droplets released from the cloud passes pass through the colder layer in the atmosphere. Then this precipitation reaches on the earth not in the form of water droplets. Reach on earth's surface in the form of a very hard compressed pellet, ice pellet. Such hard compressed ice pellets are called hailstones. And these hailstones are called in Malayalam Alipal. Look at the picture where you could see small compressed ice pellets of different size. They are called hailstones. Here it is hailstones, another form of precipitation and you could see the very hard small compressed ice pellets are falling down and these ice pellets falling down from the sky is called a hailstone. They are hailstones. Rainfall the most familiar or commonest form of precipitation is in the form of water drops, that is rainfall. Precipitation in the form of water drops released from the cloud and reaching on earth's surface is called rainfall. And the rainfall is the most common or most familiar form of precipitation. So the size of the water droplets within the cloud grow in size. As the condensation continues, we owe into gravitational force that water droplets get released from the cloud and fall on Earth's surface and that water drop from the cloud falling on Earth's surface is called rainfall. And there are three types of rainfall. 
and this classification of rainfall into three types are based on their formation orographic rain or orographic rainfall another name for orographic rainfall is relief rainfall let's see the orographic rainfall look here the moisture laden wind blowing from the sea and enters the land after hitting here it is that moisture laden wind after hitting the mountain that moisture laden wind is uh, rising up moving up along the mountain slopes as the moisture laden wind moves up along the mountain slopes it gets cooled so cooling continues then condensation happens as the condensation continues clouds are formed you can see here in a clouds are formed again more and more moisture reach condensation continues then it rains here in the windward side this side is called what windward side the slope of the mountain which faces the wind windward side and it rains here and it rains here and this type of rainfall is called orographic rainfall so orographic rainfall is received in the windward side of the mountain and after moisture shed here the dry wind reaches the opposite side here it is that opposite side is called what a leeward side so that leeward side only dry wind hot dry wind reaches here which causes no rainfall and here this side windward side there is no rainfall it causes no rainfall so this region is called a rain shadow region this region is called a rain shadow region leeward side rain shadow region windward side heavy rainfall is there and this phenomena we can see in kerala during southwest monsoon season during southwest monsoon season western ghat so the western slopes of western ghat uh, receives heavy rainfall through orographic rainfall and this rainfall is also called uh, relief rainfall but the other side i mean the eastern slopes of the western ghat not in kerala which is situated in tamil nadu and that remain dry it causes no rainfall because it is what a leeward side rain shadow region that is the reason southwestern season kerala receives rainfall tamil nadu receives no rainfall especially that uh, eastern slopes of western ghat receives no rainfall because rain shadow region leeward side another type of rainfall is convectional rainfall it is a peculiar feature of equatorial climate now let us see convectional rainfall this convectional rainfall is a common phenomenon in the equatorial region or tropical region during summer why because the equatorial region has a certain certain peculiarities what are the peculiarities of equatorial region you see here equatorial region and here it is what a 0 degree latitude and this is what the equator and the area on either side of the equator we say what equatorial region what are the peculiarities of this region one is high temperature because sun rays falls vertically so high temperature is uh, received in this area the other one you know that presence of uh, large water bodies you can see you know, water bodies are here, large water bodies so that high temperature causes that air to heat and rises up with that heated air we know that heated air or hot air carries more water vapor in it so it carries water vapor when it carries water vapor and uh, when it is going up it began to cool down and as a result cumulus clouds are formed and this cumulus clouds uh, causes rainfall and that rainfall occurs in the equatorial region especially in the afternoon with the thunder lightning is called a convectional rainfall the conditions required for that con convectional rainfall is high temperature and here high temperature is there presence of water bodies water bodies are there and it causes heavy rainfall in the afternoon with the lightning thunder and it is most common in the tropical region or equatorial region and this type of rainfall is called a convectional rainfall another type of rainfall is border rainfall which is very common in the coastal regions 
Now let us see border rain fall. There is always a difference in the atmospheric temperature over land and sea in the coastal area. The reason is specific heat of water is more than the land. That means even if the same amount of solar radiation is received by the land and sea, heating would be different. That is land will get heated more quickly and will cool down more quickly. But water will take time to heat up, it will take time to cool down. And as a result, there is air with a different temperature. So here warm air will be pushed up by the cold air. And we know that warm air contains more water vapor in it. So that warm air being pushed by the cold air, when that warm air goes up, it carries water vapor moisture in it, cooling down. When it is cooling down, condensation occurs, then clouds are formed. Then condensation continues, then the cloud, the size of the water droplets within that cloud get released from that cloud and fall on earth surface as a rainfall. And this type of rainfall, which is very common in the coastal area, is called a border rainfall. So let us conclude this chapter, Sun, the ultimate source. The very existence of biosphere depends upon solar energy. Even the distribution of plants, animals and human beings depend upon or in is in accordance with uh, the availability of uh, solar energy. We know that atmospheric phenomenon like uh, rain, snowfall, which are inevitable for the sustenance of life is also controlled by solar energy. So there is a natural mechanism. We have learned that natural mechanism. That is what heat budget which balances that energy flows like insulation and terrestrial radiation. Even the slightest variation in the energy flow is a threat to the sustenance of life. So we, the human beings, the present generation on the earth have a greater role to play. The social lesson that we have to learn from this chapter is we have to stop all unscientific practices, unscientific activities and uh, sustain the earth for the generation to come. Remember, this earth is not your personal property. It is our ancestral wealth. And this is the social lesson from this chapter. That's all. Thank you for watching me.